as india completed 75 years of independence it compelled introspection on the idea of indian nationalism and secularism more so in the light of bharat ratna awarded to mr l k adwani the titan of right wing politics in india let us revisit the two spectacular political marches from 20th century history that had a transformative effect on india's political scenario mahatma gandhi's 1930 dandi march or dandi salt march during the freedom struggle and lk adwani's 1990 hindutva rath yatra a look at the two events provides us with logical insights into their leading characters differing visions of indian identity let us not forget that both the events had stirred up mass sentiment by using potent symbolism 1930 was marked by growing dissatisfaction against british policies burdening common indians through repressive taxation laws and non redressal of political rights non cooperation movement had emerged but lacked coherent direction it was in 1929 that congress resolved on complete independence through peaceful legitimate means gandhi ji assessed the mood and brewing unrest to conceive the salt satyagraha in contrast 1989 saw congress's dominance fade away after four decades of single party rule socialists and jansang had briefly held power highlighting growing appetite for political alternatives there were clear indications that religion was becoming a factor in the political discourse bjp championed hindu nationalism to expand space vacated by congress to expand the space vacated by congress adwani recalibrated bjp's strategy using religion based mass mobilization by launching the rath yatra gandhi ji's conception of indian freedom struggle was rooted in equal rights and stakes for all citizens regardless of identities his vision was molded by his experience of racism abroad therefore he rejected exclusion of minorities every aspect of the march from its multi faith composition to repeated stress on hindu muslim amity reflected gandhi ji's nationhood anchored in empathy cutting across man made divisions gandhi ji protested against the salt laws because the use of salt was universal and the rise in its price affected the poor across all religions in contrast adwani's rath yatra vision was fashioned on the premises of identity politics which fed on alienation and conflict it tapped into hindu victimhood and lost glory resurrecting the century old ram janmabhoomi dispute the narrative focused on the erection of babri masjid after destroying ram's birthplace it pitched the mosques destruction as an atonement for historical wrongs by muslim rulers it mobilized mass hindu resentment and resurrected communal memories while reviewing or while viewing indian identity only through hindu icons gandhi ji picked salt to protest unfair taxation a basic necessity for indians irrespective of social status by positioning the states oppressive restrictions as accessing their staple food gandhi ji framed swaraj as not just political freedom but economic justice and liberation from poverty the dandi march was engineered around this universal right and denial drawing people across caste class and regional barriers adwani repackaged the decades old ram janmabhoomi temple cause around the journey of a symbolic chariot undertaking a pan india sojourn for lord rama it evoked hindu cultural exclusivity rendered as the return of prestige to hindus after alleged historical humiliations making their identity synonymous with ancient hindu kingdoms 
the rath with portraits of ram sita became an exhibit drumming up religious fervor and forging common identity around faith symbols rather than everyday rites gandhi ji involved all congress presidencies in detailed planning of the 24 day march its route touched many villages vital for night halts and food well drafted speeches attacking unjust taxation that condemned poor to poverty elicited mass emotion along the route from what satyagrahis wore to their nightly prayer routines to every other detail were strategized anticipating government crackdowns it became a spectacle as foreign journalists picked up minor details given gandhi ji's global stature post south african success likewise adwani consulted rss and vhp to plan the daily schedule for several weeks in advance including how to attract masses to the rath it halted at historical hindu monuments major metro cities allowing for renewed media hype adwani lambasted pseudo secularists in speeches calling on hindus to reclaim lost dignity his crafted narrative dubbed siding with babri masjid as endorsing tyranny against hinduism the Re the rath yatra gained exponential attention thanks to tv cameras broadcasting the rath showcasing the hindu deities which attracted vast crowds gandhi ji's march touched an emotional chord because it showed ordinary people undertaking extraordinary struggle by the time gandhi ji raised a fist full of natural salt at the dandi beach violating british law the stage was set for eruption careful pamphleteering ensured widespread awareness dharma prayers and bhajans infused spiritual flavor alighting fervor people emulated civil disobedience by producing salt illegally as arrest peaked adwani's rath yatra succeeded in its aim through months of drum beating about the road show wanting to liberate ram janmabhoomi despite obstacles the metaphor of lone chariot taking the message nationally swelled hindu passions with adwani portrait as a warrior timing it with ram shila poojan adwani ensured limelight for his project when adwani was arrested on route it triggered immediate backlash and calls for united hindu action in defiance thus solidifying his strategy gandhi ji's march birthed a constitutional civil disobedience movement that awakened national consciousness and unity against imperialism by walking over 390 kilometers across communities Gandhi ji amplified interfaith bonds he reverted communal distrust as dangerous for swaraj a legacy that endured even amidst the partition's carnage adwani's mass religious mobilization dented the gandhian legacy it reopened and deepened religious fault lines ratcheting up the politics of cultural nationalism at the cost of secular ethos adwani set the foundations for the recrafting of indian nationalism by making it exclusive instead of integrative through hindu muslim polarization gandhi ji's politics was that of a visionary statesman whereas adwani's was an unapologetic attempt to solidify the sense of victimhood among hindus and thus establish a lasting vote bank for bjp gandhi ji's and adwani's marches reveal how elaborately crafted political spectacles channel mass opinion to advance different political ideologies with iconic symbols tactically layered on secular everyday rites or religious myths woven around alleged historical wrongs they framed nationalism and state's role according to their respective world views their ability to capture public imagination through dramatic mobilization remains unparalleled the enduring and uncompromising clash between gandhi ji's equitable pluralism and adwani's selective glory resting on blood and belief represents incompatible visions of indian nationhood 
As India marches ahead towards its centenary of independence in 2047, it stands at the cusp of historic transition. On one hand, it can build on the Gandhian vision of inclusive and progressive nationhood. On the other, contemporary politics witnesses the rise of majoritarian nationalism that challenges pluralism. Revisiting the divergent legacies inherited from Gandhiji's iconic salt march during freedom struggle and L.K. Advani's watershed Hindu Rath Yatra of 1990 offers clues to alternative political futures that await India. Gandhiji's Satyagraha, unleashing civil disobedience against repressive British salt tax laws, left defining marks on India's national consciousness. By choosing salt, a secular commodity central to lives of rich and poor Indians alike, Gandhiji framed the struggle as one for securing both political freedom and economic emancipation. His ability to bring together diverse communities during Dandi March sowed early seeds of unity in diversity. Repeated stress on Hindu-Muslim amity and equality across castes and classes allowed emergence of an integrative nationalism. In Gandhiji's worldview, the rights and opportunities accessible to citizens from all social groups became a central promissory note of the Republic. Affirmative action, minority rights enshrined in constitution had clear lineage to Gandhiji's philosophy. Gandhiji's salt march captured global attention, amplifying moral voice against imperialism, setting precedents for human rights movements worldwide. This ability to stir empathetic public opinion, placing shared humanism at center, be it farmer protests or anti-corruption movements, continues to endure in contemporary India as well. Gandhian mass mobilization privileged non-violent civil liberties over authoritarian diktats which kept state excesses in check. In contrast, the political spectacle engineered by Advani's Rath Yatra reopened old interfaith disputes which kept the communal fault lines simmering. Its messaging invoked alleged historical wrongs against Hindus by Muslim rulers for electoral mobilization of the majority community. By calling on Hindus to unite and reclaim lost honor tied to places of worship like Ayodhya, it amplified a sense of victimhood and past humiliation, humiliations against one community. This philosophical mooring sought to strip the nation of its centuries-old composite culture. The Rath Yatra symbolism brought about religious consolidation. This has reduced Indian identity to only its Hindu heritage. BJP's Hindu majoritarian ideology has limited appetite for pluralism, which places the minorities outside the mainstream. Since Adwani's model relies on faith-based identity politics, it encourages an increased role of religion in electoral battles. Competitive communalism has led to growing majoritarian policies and imposition of regressive discriminatory practices. Unlike Gandhiji, who had the moral authority to check the state's authoritarian ambitions, the contemporary Indian state under this model has turned intolerant, displaying a penchant for clamping down on democratic dissent in the name of defending the culture. This indicates a dangerous trajectory where brute force is used to suppress alternate viewpoints and impose the writ of an aggressive exclusionary nationalism that underlies the foundational pluralism of India as envisaged by its constitution. Analyzing past trajectories and current status, Gandhian legacy of constructive rather than combative nationalism, his ability to secure liberation through mass awakening rather than capture of power appears more aligned with the egalitarian progressive vision of India's founding fathers. It allowed gradual deepening of civic liberties and grassroots democracy.
Gandhiji's adherence to constitutional methods, non-violence and checking states' coercive powers enhances rather than undermines a common India identity. Compared to this, politics fashioned after Advani's Yatra has relied on propagation of hate and wielding state apparatus for cultural dominance or electoral success. This risks undoing the decades of nation building. As India looks ahead at 100 years of freedom, it stands at the cusp of history. There are two opposite choices before us. One is to follow, preserve and strengthen the Gandhian legacy of humanism by concretizing vision of our republic's founding fathers. The other is abandoning constitutional values and let Adwani's legacy of communal polarization prevail. Which of the two choices will serve the people of India better? The answer is obvious. Is it to you also?